Well, hello again. And this video is, of course, how to create a winning online art course, part two. Now, I'm assuming that you checked out part one over here, and that got us to the stage of kind of putting our plan together. We looked a little bit about the audience, the essential things that we needed. We looked at what they wanted to gain out of the course, a few different course options. We've gathered some content together. And in today's video, we're going to take it right up to that point where somebody could purchase your course. So if you're new to this channel, then welcome. My name is Sophie Mahia, and I help artists to make a living from their art or creativity by building a stable, profitable business doing what they love. And on this channel, we share things all art business related. So like I say, if you haven't been here before, make sure to check out this video and then take a look around other useful videos. There's always links below to take you off to watch other things. We have them all categorized. So make sure to have a good look and maybe watch some other videos. And of course, leave a comment below this one if you find the content useful, which we hope you do. So we're ready to pick up from where we left off. You've got your pen and paper poised, your post-it notes. You're like, what do I do now, Sophie? I've got all this stuff gathered. What do I need to do? Well, the very first thing that you need to do now is you need to get some feedback on your idea because there is nothing worse than putting a whole online course together and it kind of tanking. All right, so you've done the research with your customer. If you've got existing customers, you can maybe just say, hey, can I give you a call? I want to run an idea past you, see what you think. All right, if you're in day-to-day, face-to-face contact perhaps with some customers. You might just gather a few of them round, say, hey, could you pop round for, for coffee? Come round to my studio, just have a bit of a chat with me. I've got this idea, I wanna see what you think. You could also gather a few people onto a Zoom call, our lovely Zoom, or Facebook Messenger. You want to get feedback. And I promise you it's going to be so worth your while. If you put the whole course together without any feedback, and then people start taking it and they watch it and they say, oh, I wish it was in a different order or the videos are a bit long or there's not enough information or there's too, too much information. You want to glean some of this now. So now is your chance to get a bit of feedback. You gather some people and you run them through your course idea so far so that they can say, oh, that's great. Are you gonna teach this? Are you gonna teach that? How long are your videos gonna be? Right, that you can have a, an engaging conversation. Then you can say to them, if you were to watch an online course like that, what would you want to see here? You know, would you want this? Would you want that? Now, obviously, you're not gonna take the words of your very best friends or three people that you spoke to as absolute, you know, must do, but you definitely wanna take into consideration what they're saying. And if you do have access to more than, say, three people, then you're gonna get some valuable information. If you have a mailing list, which we hope you do, you could send out, um, a questionnaire and just ask people, say, I'm thinking of putting this course together, what do you think? You could use Instagram stories and say, hey, I'm thinking of putting this course together, what do you think? So the next stage is you need to make the changes, all right? So a bit like as a painter, when I get three quarters of the way through a painting, sometimes you can fall in love a little bit with what you've got and you're, you're kind of working around bits that you really like and you don't want to change anything. And actually what you know in your heart you should do is just push through and move things around and, and, and progress. You need to do the same thing with your course. Don't get precious on, well, I've spent time putting these things together. If you've had feedback to say, don't bother sharing that, or where's the information on this? You need to go back into it and reconfigure the information so you've gone back to your rough draft and it's kind of up, upgraded or updated if you like. Now it's time for the hard graft. You've got to plan out each of the lessons. You do not want to be starting your teaching with ers and ums and being a bit wishy-washy. Trust me, we've all taken courses like that where you start the lesson and you think, oh goodness me, are we ever going to get to the end of the lesson? You want to be to the point, you want to know what you're, what you're talking about. And if you're fairly new to this online education world, then I really recommend writing out the lesson because when you come to record it, you won't waffle so much, you'll stay on track and get all that information out there. So plan all the lessons out. That's, you know, you wanna allocate a, a good amount of time to do that. You see why I recommend starting with a beginner's course? If you'd gone for your all in, I am going to teach you everything about, I think we use weaving as the example, the ultimate weavers course, and you've decided there are six modules and each module has six lessons, six sixes, 
plus some introductions and conclusions, you're making a lot of lessons, which is absolutely fine, but you want to make sure that perhaps you've already done a shorter course before you do that. So plan out all your lessons, that's the next step. And now of course it's time to record them. And this you can find takes longer than you think. So even if you think to yourself, well, this is a three minute lesson that I'm gonna teach here, are you gonna get that in one take? Likely not, all right? Your three minute lesson could end up being 30 minutes of video that you then edit down to three minutes. And it might've taken you a few takes to get that. So be prepared for doing things over and over again. When someone's buying a course, they do not want ers and ums and you waffling off and doing things sideways, all right? It's completely different to a YouTube video or a Facebook Live or Instagram Live. Someone's paying you for the content. You need to get to the point and deliver your content. So you're going to allocate time, you're going to record all the videos, unless you've got someone else coming in doing that for you. And you know, again, if you're not tech savvy or this whole thing frightens you, get somebody in, you know, hire in a videographer, get them to record all the lessons for you, edit them and send you the files because, you know, whatever the investment for that is what a relief that's going to be for someone else doing all of that. But if you're not ready to do that, you gotta record them first, you gotta edit them. Now, if you're using something like Mac, I use iMovie, which is okay, it's got enough features on it, but likely you'd want to use something perhaps a bit more, depends how much editing you're gonna do. If you're cutting between above shots and below shots and face-to-face -face shots, there's gonna be a lot of editing. So um, make sure that you use maybe something like Premiere Pro, or again, you could outsource the editing food for thought. So now you have a folder with all your lessons, all well titled, I imagine, all the video files with the correct lesson title on, and you've got your piece of paper with all your lessons and your modules and, and all the bits and pieces. I would suggest that you actually write down lesson descriptions on your piece of paper, because that's gonna come in handy too. There's a little sideways tip there. So the next job is to take that course platform that you've decided on. And remember in the previous video, I personally recommend Kajabi. And there's a link where you can find out more below this video. But of course there are lots of other platforms that you can host online courses on. So you can make the right choice for the right platform for you. But the next job is to upload all those videos and actually create your course, which is kind of exciting. Next up, you want to make those lessons user-friendly for your customer. So take the lesson descriptions. That just needs to be one or two sentences. This is what this lesson is about. This is what you're gonna learn here. Copy and paste that underneath in the description box next to each lesson. You really want to make sure that somebody doesn't look at the video and think, oh, I've got to, I've got to watch that. What's that one about? Write a description of what's in the video so that they're really clear and they'll go ahead and encourage them to move forward through your course. So you're gonna do that, you're gonna upload all your videos, you're gonna write a little lesson description, and then likely you'll need graphics to cover um, each of the lessons. You don't want one of those videos where it's you halfway across the screen or blurred or an upfront um, paintbrush that somehow's you know, got in the recording. So you want to make sure that it's got a nice cover. So you could do that on something like Canva or you can have someone else do that for you, make lesson covers. And likely the platform, again, if you choose Kajabi, there's some lovely areas that you can make look really branded, a nice course header, and a welcome area for a welcome video with a header. So you're gonna do all that faffing about, all the little writing, the descriptions, make the platform work. So you're making it really user-friendly for your customer. Next up, if you've made any PDF sort of downloads, you want to make sure those are created and you upload those as well. You might have made a materials list or some sort of reference list that goes with the course. So don't forget to upload your PDFs or added files as well. Then really we're at the place of, well, if your course is ready to use, you've now got to make it ready for someone to buy. And again, this is gonna depend on what platform you use, but likely you're gonna to need to set up a way for them to pay. So for example, if you decide to go ahead with Kajabi, they have something called offers inside there. You'll create an offer that might be a one-time pay, a multiple-time pay. You're gonna link the platform with you know, your credit card facility, um, PayPal, for example, different ways that people can pay so that you are ready to get your course out into the world. And then comes the whole marketing piece. How is somebody gonna get from out there to buying your course? 
you've made the course, you've created some payment buttons, but you're going to need a page where they land on, where they get the information and click buy now. Now that really, that whole piece is the marketing piece. So guess what? There are further videos coming out on exactly how you can start to market your lawn and launch your online course so you can get bums on seats. But at this point, you have your course ready to go. So that's something to really, really celebrate. I think the number of people who start putting a course together and don't complete it is huge. So if you're watching this video and you decide to take action today and you create and finish that course, please do let us know. Hit me up on Instagram at Sophie Mahia. Send me a direct message and say, I watched your YouTube videos and I've created my very own course. And then send me a link so I can take a look at it. I would love to see. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope you're really inspired about putting your course together and look forward to watching the next videos on how to get it out into the world. So thank you so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.